Have you ever experienced traveling to a new place for the first time? How did you able to locate that certain place when you still have no idea where it is? Did you use a road map, GPS or you just read signage along the way? Whatever it is, it's surely useful if things are all organized. You can get information easily, if things are orderly arranged and properly labeled. Scientists have always searched for patterns, regularities and symmetries in nature. If a pattern can be discovered, information and data can be arranged and organized in ways that will make it more understandable, meaningful, and useful. An excellent example of this is the periodic table of elements. At the end of this lesson, we will be able to answer the following questions. How did the periodic table develop? What information can be obtained from this organizing tool? You will recognize this incredible feature of the periodic table in this video lesson as you explore the full potential as a source of information about the elements. The periodic table of elements is an arrangement of elements based on specific characteristics and properties. Being organized according to atomic mass. Electron number. Electron configuration. And their unique chemical properties, in which the scientist can easily recognize the individual elements. Here are some essential details about the development of the periodic table. The development could be traced back in 1817 to the work of Johann Doberiner. A German chemist who formed the triads of elements with similar properties, like the triad of calcium, barium and strontium. In 1863, John Newlands, an English chemist proposed the law of octaves. He based his classification of elements on the fact that similar properties could be noted for every eight element when they are arranged in order of increasing atomic masses. The periodic table of elements is the visual representation of the periodic law. Periodic law states that, if elements are arranged according to their atomic mass, it shows regular variation. It was discovered by Dmitri Mendeleev and Lodharmeyer around 1869. Both found ways of arranging elements in order of increasing atomic mass. It is interesting to note that these two scientists did not know each other, yet they came up with the same conclusions. Both scientists were teachers, living and working in different places. Meyer lived and worked in Germany, while Mendeleev in Russia. Both of them also left blank spaces in their tables, believing that these spaces would be filled later with elements yet to be discovered. Later in 1914, Henry Moseley, an English physicist, observed that the order of the X-ray frequencies emitted by elements, follows the ordering of the elements by atomic number. The modern periodic law which states that, the properties of elements vary periodically, with atomic number. Atomic number is equal to the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. The atomic number is a common characteristic of all atoms of an element. Nowadays, elements are arranged according to increasing atomic number. The periodic table consists of 118 elements and is represented by symbols. The symbols of elements are based on the first letter of the element's name, or the first two letters of it. The first letter of the symbol will be capitalized, while the second letter, written by a small letter. For example, the symbol for copper is Cu. It stands for cuprum, which is the Latin word for copper. The number above each symbol in the table is its unique atomic number. and the lower number with a decimal point, represents the atomic mass of the element. Elements are arranged in such a way that, 
information about the elements and their compound are easily revealed. The vertical columns of the modern periodic table are called groups, as they are in Mendeleev's table. However, the modern periodic table has many more groups with 18, compared with just 8, in Mendeleev's table. Groups identify the principal families of elements, and each group have special names. Group 1 is named as the alkali metals. Group 2 as the alkaline earth metals. Group 17 as the halogens. And group 18 as the noble gases. Groups 13 to 16 are named based on the first element found in their families. Thus, group 13 is called the boron group. Group 14 is called the carbon group. Group 15 is called the nitrogen group. And group 16 is called the oxygen group. Elements in the same group have similar properties. For example, all elements in group 18 are colorless, odorless gases, such as neon. In contrast, all elements in group 1 are very reactive solids. They react explosively with water. The horizontal rows of the modern periodic table are called periods. They are numbered from top to bottom. There are seven horizontal periods in the periodic table. Some periods in the modern periodic table are longer than others. For example, Period 1 contains only two elements, hydrogen and helium. In contrast, periods 6 and 7 are so long that many of their elements starting with lanthanum in period 6 and actinium in period 7. The elements are grouped into blocks or series in the periodic table. Groups 3 to 12 constitutes one block wherein elements in this block are referred as the transition elements. Lanthanides and actinides are special series of elements, but also part of the transition block. They are also called the inner transition elements. Elements from the taller columns, groups 1, 2, and 13 through 18, are called the representative elements or main groups of the periodic table. We can use the periodic table to identify the known elements as metals. Non-metals And metalloids. The non metals are confined to the right side of the table. The elements along the stair step line are the metalloids. Metalloids have the appearance and some properties of a metal, but behave like a non metal in certain instances. In the periodic table above, elements are color coded to show their class. As you move from left to right across each period of the table, the elements change from metals to metalloids to nonmetals. This arrangement allows us to study systematically the way properties vary with the elements' position in the table. Similarities and differences among the elements are easier to understand and remember. Yes, in science, the periodic table serves as a roadmap in our journey in chemistry.